Water anything to get to it? I got some water. Got a solid two milliliters of water right there. <laughs> Ready to go. That's all I need, bro. It's my first sip for the day. <laughs> <laughs> what a water di- <coughs> deficit. Water diet, just two tablespoons of water a day. <laughs> That's all you require. Big, strong boy. Yeah, I'm trying to fast from water right now. Clear all the toxins out of my I'm body. I'm telling you, bro. Just drink beer. The, the Matrix is trying to make you drink water. I'm telling you. Why would you ever want to drink water? Bro, if you want to be a fucking libtard little bitch. Tough. Soy boy. <laughs> what are you drinking? Soy water? Drinking soy. Gluten-free. Gluten-free water. Vegan water. Man, just starting off strong, you know, owning the libs within the first five minutes. Owning, <laughs> owning what? The libs. What is that? Like liberals, libtards? Oh, yes, on in the libs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't affiliate with libs. Except for my boy, Gordon McNeely. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, except for my boy, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Nah, Not I don't fuck with Joe Biden. Feel bad for Joe Biden, bro. It was good, though. First episode back in a minute. Feels getting good. The blood, getting the blood warm again. Feels good to be back, man. Feels good to be back. It's been too long. Feels good to be black. Can't relate. <laughs> How does that feel? How does it feel being black? Man? A lot of ups and downs, bro. Yeah, I imagine. Could you imagine? Being yeah. white is like, I don't know, I guess it's like up and ups, but then you just like... <laughs> <laughs> and then you get too high, and then you yeah. look down and it gets scary. Yeah, like it was all up and up for, for you know, our forefathers, and then... Just raise a bunch of like pussies, you know, trying to break the cycle. I'm telling you, gotta start eating rocks, bro. Fucking <laughs> get hard, bro. Stop drinking this pussy ass water, bro. <laughs> eating glass. I swear. Can you imagine, like, if the self improvement part of the internet gets so intense oh, that you have bro. David Goggins like. If you eat anything but glass for breakfast, <laughs> motherfucker, then I'm going to come and punch your mama right in the face. Bro, it's this episode of Spongebob where Spongebob is trying to get into this place called the Salty Spittoon. And mm-hmm. you know about this? No, no. Oh, fuck. So you got to be very tough to get into the Salty Spittoon. So this one guy, he walks to the door and he is like, the bouncer was like, how tough are you? And the man said, how tough am I? I had a bowl of nails for breakfast. <laughs> And then the bouncer was like, so? And the battery was like, without any milk. And he's like, oh, please come right in. Wow. That's hard, bro. I'm so glad that our generation was raised by Spongebob. <laughs> Sponge, I ain't gonna lie, Spongebob like man, but he's a... <laughs> <laughs> he's a OG, man. <laughs> it's kind of like Drake fans, you know? Yeah, like, like I but Drake, though. I had my wits end with Drake. Yeah. I can't respect Drake no more. I know, as an artist, I guess, you know... Pretty much that all you could do. But as a person influencing the people, it ain't really making no sense. I'm glad I've converted you yeah, into been, a Drake hater. For real, I was still probably pulling hard for Drake up until last year this time. Yeah. Yeah, man. So you're going to become a massive Yay fan like me now? I'd definitely say a Yay fan, but not that big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, kind really, of, it's kind of a rough time to be a, a Yay fan I'm right now. I'm telling you, bro. What's going on? He got a new wife now, eh? Got a new wife. He, uh, he's, you know, somehow six inches taller. For really? Some, I yes, know. I did He just that. always seems like, he just always, like, comes up with a beard or some, like, weird shit. Yeah, definitely cloned, my boy. Very possible, man. Very could be possible. an actor. Could be AI. There was this whole thing going around where he was, like, going to Saudi Arabia with his whole team and shit. His team, like yeah, like producers. people that he like works with, and she yeah, producer stuff like that. There were like different people posting stories of being like a certain location, like Italy or Middle East, mm. and then people would like spot Ye at that same spot, really? same country, and like run into him. And it was like not even just music, but like Donda team, Ye, uh, Yeezy team, and shit like that. Anyway, though, we're not here to talk about Kanye, though. Kanye, he had to talk about us. It's here to talk about the us, real bro. superstars bro, in this life. The up-and-comers, man, not Telling these old men, bro. Not these old guys that been there, done that. I know that we both came a long way the last six months or so. Telling you, bro. A lot of people, I feel like, think that you may have dropped what you're doing a little bit because like, they don't see you on the selective sessions and stuff like that. But Yeah, man, I want people to think that 
that people you do? think. Oh yeah, bro. Like right, ultimately, I really don't care what people think or say, whatever. But I want people. I've always loved it when people underestimate me or don't expect nothing from me. Mm-hmm. So when I boss you and I bump in here, you know, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going on. What I was gonna say was like, yeah, but people, people don't don't see what you've been doing behind the scenes. You're still a very integral part. Maybe well, I shouldn't be given some. I don't know. Pe- How would pe- you speak for yourself? Like I don't know. People, you say integral part for me. Yeah, like uh, of the whole process. Like you're still like. Oh, I'm trying to say I'm still very involved. Exactly. Oh yes, yes, yes. Behind yes, the yes. behind the scenes, man. Yeah, still very involved. I slip out of. I slip in and out of like different modes a lot. Like a lot of times, I'd be very creative, and mm. I want to be behind the camera. A lot of you know DJing and all that stuff, and then I go to a point where I'm just very like corporate, where I want to study and be in my books, and I don't want to play. I just want to be inside. So I'd say the last six months I've been I've been kind of very corporate, like definitely like around March to June, very corporate. And as the summer rolled along, I got more creative and found a good balance of corporate and play. Yeah, man. I'm the exact same way. It's it's a hard balance and I think it's it's good to try to find a balance. Oh, yeah. Because I also balance. find it difficult sometimes being a, a creative and a businessman. Yeah. And it's like you have to use two different parts of your brain. Like with business, you know, you, know, you want to be efficient, get it done. It's ones and zeros, you know. Literally. With, creati- with creativity, you got to take your time. Sometimes you got to take a day just to like just to be and let just it hit you. Be. I usually take Sunday as my just be day. You know, I get out of bed whenever I feel like and probably smoke a joint at 11 a.m. if I want to. Damn. That's the, <laughs> that's the, that's the goal right there. Yeah. But, but nah, yeah. And I guess the discipline is that being able to keep that to just Sunday. Yeah, for real though. For real, throughout the week, definitely I have to do everything I got to do. And then smoke a joint. But I just come off for of four months and no smoking. So, like, pot on the back for that, bro. Like, four months, bro. That was a lot. For me, that was pretty intense. That was pretty intense, bro. It's a big accomplishment. Yeah. And I know, like, for you, too, that was kind of, that's kind of your sole thing that you become addicted to or whatever that, that you do. Yeah, bro, like... Not a big drinker, not a big anything else. No, no, I really a big nothing, but I just find smoking is just my ultimate, I don't know what to call it, like just release at the end of the day, my relaxer, you know? Yep. It works differently with different people, man. Fuck's for real. And like, I beat myself up because I'm like, oh, I smoking a joint before I go to bed. But bro, when I really look at the amount of weed I put in the joint... And the fact that it's just one joint a day and I only smoking it at the end of my day, doing pretty good. 100%, bro. It's probably pretty like good. 80% tobacco, eh? It, bro, at one point, it was like 96% tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> and a little those, bit of weed. Those are the joints I like. Little weed for flavor. Exactly. Yeah, what's going on at you these days? Yeah, man. I've really shifted my focus um, since the last time that we were doing the podcast and all of that. You know, in the this time last year, I was really focused on, you know, the summer festival. We were getting a band put together. Fuck. The podcast was going strong. I don't think we did the podcast last year, this year, not this time. We were just start. Yeah, it was more like February. Yeah, we got, yeah, we didn't do our first episode till January or so this year. Yeah, I, I'm thinking more like winter, but yeah, let's say like seven, eight months ago. Oh, good. That was kind of our focus, doing a lot of live shows. And I was just all over the place. I was doing a lot of things, but I wasn't taking the time to do these things excellently. Mm. I was doing them good or good enough, competently, but not excellently. And that's something that I, what I've been focused on recently is focusing my attentions on a few different things. Okay. Trying to really zero in on them. Um, like I said before, the festival, the band... Managing three or four artists at once, all these kind of things. And the biggest shift for me has been <clears throat> zeroing in on a few things like content, dope music. Mm-hmm. You know, we've both been into sales. Oh. 
learning but that. We got to get into that. Definitely, man. And I'm, I'm really loving it. I'm still a beginner with it, but all of that, you know, speaking, performing, singing, working on my voice, and just take, you know, working with a lot of artists and trying to make their stuff as dope as possible and just, just hammer in, man. Just greatness, man. I'm just trying to sharpen my skills. I would say, you know, you've definitely been on your grind the past, yeah, like if you really look at it, a year ago from now, end of November. And bro, if you just look at the content that you've been pushing out for the past year, the summer fest, it wasn't as big as what you wanted it, but you got the vision from your brain and you put it to reality because I remember a lot of times you told me, no bro, I have a vision for this summer and this is how it's going to be. And from A to Z, I would say you got it done. You got it done, bro. Real talk. With no sponsorship. You know, we reach out to people. I got cussed out from this one woman in Toronto. Do you want to share that story? Or? Yeah, I love to share that story. That's hilarious. I reached out. So, for those of you that don't know, we out here on PEI. It's not much urban entertainment going on. A lot of like country music, yeah. fish and chips, A lot of rock country. and roll. It's very country. Old white PEI. guys. Pretty lame. So... But the SID Summer Fest, we wanted to switch it up, be a bit more inclusive because diversity has really boomed. So anyway, I reached out to this diversity specialist or whatever, all about inclusivity. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I, I'm in one of your classes right now. Could you help me out? I got this cool idea for a festival. And she was like, how dare you reach out to me and ask me for money? And I'm like, I ain't asking you for money. Like, where do I find the money? Because you obviously ain't making enough money to pay people. Like, you getting funding now. Mm -hmm. And she just took complete offense. And I was like, just like, all right, then. Crazy. I guess that's a loss. Yeah, man. Some of these deep diversity, pro-black people is be doing too much. Indoctrinated, man. Victim mentality. Victim, yeah. Self-centeredness. Look at what the white man did. And it really comes down to just what can other people do for me? They're not thinking about what they can actually do for other people. Really? They, most people thinking like that? What other people? Yeah. I think so, too. At the end of the day, like, all of us kind of wired that way. What could someone do for me? Because even if you helping someone, like, with all your might, somewhere in the ingrained, you would appreciate a, at least a thank you. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I think that it's it's almost like the mentality of everybody has some sort of an ambition, or at least they should. And actually, uh, uh, I heard Bruno talk about this. Yeah, what do you say? The difference between it's like the the five friends, five enemies. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between greed. Ah, what is it? Greed and ambition. Difference between greed and ambition. Something like that. And and the greed is, I want to make a bunch of money, but I want to keep it to myself. Generosity is the other word. Greed versus generosity. I okay. want to make a bunch of money and I want to keep it for myself. You know, you're giving me 10% commission. Can I can I get a 12% commission? You know, just like wanting every penny. Generosity is, you know, you make 10 grand and you give two grand away to charity or something like yep. that. So, of course, there's incentives for that. You know, you give to charity. If you own a business, that could be a write-off, right? That's why a lot of people do it. Or you, it makes you feel better about yourself, um, but at the end of the at the end of the day, if you really want to be successful, make something of yourself. You really got to look at what value can you provide for the world. Like That's if, it. Even we're talking about talking about sales. Obviously, if you're selling something to somebody, obviously you're trying to make money. But the successful people are the ones that go, "I'm gonna." If we're both putting in fifty percent, I'm gonna put in sixty percent. Yeah. I'm going to like do the best for them because it's not just about the money. It's about are they satisfied walking away with this and saying, you know, I really got the best value for what I paid for right here. Yeah, like if you know your offer could actually help this person to either lose weight, get that girl, make that 10K a month. Like, bro, I got the best solution for you. You should buy it. Exactly. And being confident that, that you can really do that. And that's the big problem with people nowadays, man. They're just they're just self-centered and they're lazy. Mm. Especially since COVID. Bro, 
since COVID, a lot of people is just so mean and inconsiderate. Yeah. We stopped looking at each other as people. For, for real though. That's so true. Yeah. Everyone is more like a... A lot of just NPCs type of vibe. And very like fearful of each other. Yeah. You, know, you might get me sick or whatever. I gotta stay in my house. Stay yeah. away from you. Something, something gotta be wrong with this person. I want to go back a little bit to balancing the creativity versus the business. Yeah. Because it's really an interesting thing. And you don't usually see the two coincide. Usually people that are very orderly and very business-minded and conscientious, they're not open and creative a lot of the time. No, it's funny. I just learned that word yesterday. Conscientious. Yeah. Anyway, get back to what you were saying. Like, uh, like, you know, you and Harvey are a lot more orderly and conscientious than I am. I'm a lot more on the open and, and creative side, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning from you guys more though. But you and I are both people that are a bit of the mix of the two. Mm. We have the business and the creative. Like you see that with like a Jay-Z or a 50 Cent. Most F. Um, it's an interesting blend of both worlds. I think it's a very important blend of both worlds. I think so too, because, you know, if you become too business or corporate, like I say, you're very bland and you're boring, right? And if you're just all creative, then no one could ever take you seriously. Very true. So it's good to be able to walk into a room with execs and have a conversation and it'll be good to laugh with your friends too, you know? Exactly, man. Mix it, mix it up a bit. Be versatile. Creativity isn't given the credit it deserves. Like, even in school, they don't teach you be, to be creative. No, not at all. They teach you that there's one answer for every problem. That's right. Everybody got to have the same answer. Exactly. Yeah. And thinking for yourself isn't important. But if you look at the most successful people, you look at like a Steve Jobs, he's very creative. Yeah. And Einstein, extremely creative. You know, there's there's tons of examples for it, you know. Disney, but... Creativity, man. I remember learning one time that the in ancient Rome, they had a layout of stages of learning. Okay. I forget if I told you this before. Probably. But when you're young and you're pre-adolescence, you have to consume all your knowledge. You have to learn everything Pretty from speaking. Much walk, exactly. Yeah. Learning, you know, multiplication table, math, all that kind of thing. And once you hit a teenager, that's when you become rebellious. You start to question everything. Mm. So we're told that that's not okay to do that. No, like, yeah. who do you think you are to question things? But it's yeah. actually, and even the Romans says, it's, it's part of learning. It is. And then once you, you take the information, you question it, then in your adult years, you can produce original thought. It's funny how, like I've been doing a lot of reflection during the past six months and I've been realizing how a lot of how I was raised uh, really affects how I think, right? And when it comes to like say, I don't know how I give a proper example of this, but say being a good boy, right? You know, my parents all of my aunts and uncles and everything, literally, first, like, one of the first questions they would ask me is if you've been a good boy today or whatever. So instinctively, I'm like, all right, I gotta be a good boy. No fault, don't break no rules or nothing like that. And I found, too, when I buy myself or my friends, like, I wild. Like, I just want to break free. You're a bad boy. Yeah, and, and it kind of, and, like, I see it as an adult. Adults, almost. I'm trying to think of an example. Like, I really don't... I kind of broke out of it already. But at one point, I was very shy to say, you know, walk up to that girl or step up in class or things like that. But I think I come out of my shell quite a bit, though. I can definitely relate to that as well. It's like a social programming, especially for men yeah. or, or boys, where it's... Ignore your natural instinct. And to just, yeah. you know, don't step out of the lines. Make sure you you sit still. Right. We're not built to sit still. Like, women aren't really either. Human beings aren't really, but, no. but, but especially boys. Though. We're not made to sit down <coughs> for six hours out of the day. Oh, not at all. And consume knowledge. And like I said before, we're not questioning. And one thing too, like with my hemophilia, right? 
uh, my parents was very scared for me again hurt. You should maybe explain a little oh, bit. I was People thinking don't about know, that yeah. too. So, hemophilia is a it's a blood disorder where my blood doesn't produce a particular clotting factor. Apparently, there's like twenty clotting factors that you know if you get cut, stop you from bleeding, right? And so, this particular clotting factor is called factor nine. And if you're lacking factor seven, eight, or nine, you have something called hemophilia. And then there's different uh, levels to it. You got like easy mode, mid, and severe. Um, apparently, I have severe, but I really don't feel that way now because because you're the top G. Yeah, fucking got it going on, right? Um, but yeah, with that in mind, me easily getting hurt. Growing up in the Bahamas, doctors telling my parents pretty much ain't can live past twelve, and yeah. I don't I, know if you told me that part. Before. Yeah, bro. I, my parents was told that I won't make it past twelve because of lack of treatment in the Bahamas and all sorts of stuff. No, pretty much no doctors knew how to treat me, right? So, man, they would tell me always, "Be careful, can't do this. You want to do karate? You stupid." Blah, blah, blah. And I know it's funny, but kind of broke my heart because they would tell me, you know, be as safe as I could be. I couldn't even ride my bicycle without helmet, elbow pads, gloves, long pants. Couldn't even go out of the yard. But if I did something wrong, they would beat me, bro. Like, my aunt would tear me up. You know, mom would beat me sometimes. And she would say to me, like, oh, you have medicine in the fridge. I'll cut your ass. And I'm like... But I can't even fucking ride a bike without knee pads. That's like a big contradiction. That's, that's trauma, bro. You know, so that is a big contradiction. And um, that definitely, them installing inside me, always be careful before I do something. It has a piece of my brain where it creates this procrastination, right? <clears throat> where before I want to do something risky, there's always that... Okay, you know, it's pretty uncertain out there. Times 10. So, that's my little spiel. You're a miracle boy. I am a miracle boy, bro. I have for a real reason, man. For real. And we could look at the negative ways. That is always going to affect you as yeah. a person, like evolving. But And we could look at the negative ways, but I think that there's probably a lot of positive things that came from that as well. Big positives, bro. Like, I know that you, like, you were also, like, oldest sibling, correct? Yeah. Oldest, I'm the oldest boy. I got two older sisters. But uh, yeah, man, it's definitely teach, taught me, being the oldest son has definitely taught me a lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Teaching me how to be a proper leader. Because one positive thing that my parents always instilled in me was you got to set an example for your other siblings, right? So... I always try to keep myself in a positive type of mindset, even when the content I post, because all of them pretty much growing now. My younger sister, she's 15, got a next sister, what's he, 12, 13. So, and then my brother, 21. And uh, so, yeah, man, trying to, trying to be a positive light in the world. 100%. I think that people that are born with disadvantages, it, it creates something special where since you almost have to try harder or break through that fear even more in order to do what you want. Yeah. It like adds even more to to courage. Courage, for real. Yeah, and, and you're still out here fucking like doubling my bench press, bro. Like last time we were <laughs> at the gym, you were, you were benching like 160. I was yeah, struggling was, at 130. That was a wild time. For real. Bro, the next, the following week, I went to the gym at Harvey and I couldn't make it past like 140, bro. Hey, man, a lot of people I can't do 120. Yeah, a lot of people can't even forget. They ain't even got arms, so I should just shut up. Yeah, you know that 90% of people on earth don't have arms? <laughs> <laughs> Think about that whenever you're complaining about your, oh, for they messed real. up my order at Starbucks. Yeah, for real, though. For real. I was, I was listening to 50 at Law last night. And it's so interesting how we as humans evolved our fair base and the stuff we worry about. Mm. Because, I don't know, must be thousands of years ago, we'd worry about predators and a lion coming into the village. 
And that was pretty much your main thing to worry about. And once you protect the village to the best of your ability, you know, have fun, have sex with your wife, right? But now we are the most safe and secure we have ever been. So you know what we start worrying about? What? What Sally think of me? How do I look in this dress? Oh, I didn't make $10,000 this month. Wow, I broke. I, I don't have that car that I see on Instagram. That's that's what we be worrying about nowadays. So true. Just a quick, what time is it right now? Do you want to check for me? 926. 926. Maybe like another 20 minutes. Yeah, probably wrap up soon. I think an interesting part in that too is how we've also naturally evolved to care about what other people think about us. Mm-hmm. Like say if you're in your tribe of 60 people and all of you depend on sharing resources, you play different roles in the community for survival. If those people decide one day they don't like you and they want to kick you out, bro, you're fucked. Yeah. You're going to die. Yeah. So it's like that's that's installed part of us too. It is. That, what do you call it? Tribe, tribe, and not tribe mentality, but I don't know. If you get kicked out of the tribe, you pretty much do them anyway. Big old lion, eat your leg off of them. For real, and that's like... That's the know, worst, bro. Being, you know, I hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right where the, the whole cancel culture, you know, like affects us so much. We don't want to be canceled. Um, mm. Ostracized, that kind of a thing. I want to shift gears a little bit though. and Shift it. Something I want to mention about, you know, how we... Things we've learned about, ways that we've progressed. And... I really got to appreciate one thing that you and Harvey really helped me with is truly being self-accountable and analyzing myself. Because hmm. it's an easy thing to say that. That's kind of a trendy thing to say now. Oh, like taking responsi- accountable. Yeah, taking responsibility for yourself, which I'm glad that's trending right now because that's like, <laughs> that's fucking being <laughs> yeah. an adult. Man. Yeah, real dog. And it's it's a, <laughs> cool to say like, oh, you know, I'm alpha male. Whatever. But it's, it's a much harder thing than... Most people than, imagine it. Than you, than, than, you know, it's easier said than done but the, the truth is that we all make stupid mistakes and over the summer I made lots of stupid stupid mistakes you know like a few driving mistakes I lost lost my thousand dollar phone nothing oh, crazy man. but you blew out your black back window what? yeah bro you had the speaker oh yeah 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 <laughs> bro what? I, I just heard you blow out your back or what? <laughs> <laughs> you blew oh. out that girl's back when they weren't supposed to know. Um, I did, yeah. I had a, this is a funny story. I don't know if I ever said this on camera, but I was driving I was driving around and I was about to go drop off a speaker that we had rented for a show. It was a big subwoofer. It was probably like 50 pounds. Warfer. <laughs> a big old warfer. That's what we call it in PEI, a warfer. <laughs> no, but uh, I, was, I was bringing it back to Long and McQuaid to drop it off. It was a rental. And I was going through a roundabout. That's what we call Traffic circles out here, <laughs> roundabouts, <laughs> and uh, and I was going way too fast. I had to take a left through the the traffic circle, and you're supposed to go, I think, thirty five, like Mine's thirty, making like one seventy. <laughs> on the I, don't, I don't think I'd be here today if I was doing that. <laughs> Coming off of Kensington Road, doing one sixty, and I forget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like four, like high forties or a fifty. And so I just like whipped it around going left <laughs> and the and the woofer tumbled and smashed the window out. Tough. Anyway though, uh that's just that's that's an example of kind of a dumb mistake I made in the summer. And the funny thing is I, I took it back to Long and McQuaid. I didn't I didn't mention anything about what happened. I just gave him the speaker. And then he picks it up and he's like, What's all this rattling? He thought <laughs> he thought that the, it had broke. Because wow. when he picked up there was rattling. And he goes like this and all this broken glass falls Shh, out. Tough. And I'm like, I'm really sorry, man. I offered to clean it up, but he's like, No, no, we got it. Jeez. Oh, anyway, though, that's an example of some that I did that was dumb. <laughs> and we all we all make stupid stupid mistakes as humans, you know, nobody's perfect. And I'm somebody that's very hard on myself. Like I I, I genuinely get upset at myself. Yeah, when I make dumb mistakes, I'm very hard on myself for it. And I, you know, I beat myself up and think, you know, like, I can't go through life making dumb yeah. mistakes like this. Like, you no. know, I got to hold myself to a higher standard. And I, I've realized that a coping mechanism with it so that I don't beat up myself is excuses. Really? We, we all have them, right? Like, mm. oh, I mean, I can't think of one for the speaker, but like, I lost my phone, but oh, I don't even know where it would have been. And 
this person was distracting me. Like, I don't know. Like, we just think of dumb shit, right? Like, yeah. And there's a balance between having responsibility and saying, I did this wrong. I want to improve that. How do I do better next time? How do I make sure I don't do this again? For real. And then beating yourself up and going, I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. Because mm. then you're just putting yourself down and that's true, you know? and increasing the chance you make that mistake again. Yeah, increasing anxiety and everything, bro. Exactly. Because then now you're looking at yourself as incompetent. Mm. Wow. And you don't even believe that you can fix Powerful. the problem. Yeah. So I'm finding that balance right now. And I'm also learning that you have to have incredible self-analysis if you want to be excellent at something, especially as a performer. Yes. If you look at Michael Jackson, he would do a whole amazing performance. Like people would be fainting in the audience because yeah. it was so good. Moonwalk, every move perfect, every note he did perfectly. And he'd be furious after because he one move was yeah. off time. Real dog, yeah. So you have to have that kind of level of professionalism with yourself. And and for for me, I'm focusing on a few main skills right now that I want to really hone in on, like performing. Music, speaking, and just the way you present yourself, the way that you go through life, the way that you you carry yourself with confidence, with calmness. That's another thing I'm trying to be is just more calm. Um, That's another reason I like hanging out with you is I think you have that. You're not fidgety and stuff like that. And uh, I'm working on that too. So I got to thank you and Harvey for kind of opening my eyes with that stuff and being a little bit like, man, you got to clean your fucking car, bro. You got to, yeah, you know, da, been, da, da, da. I and, could uh, say that I been learning a lot from you as well in terms of how to be more, I guess more from your mommy, how to be more, well, I, I haven't taught you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> how to be compassionate and empathetic and, um, you know, not really focusing so much on the end goal and just the journey of it and it really inspires me when I see you like I don't know even this ain't probably in a really good way to say this but like I see you go on the bed at like four in the morning and it's like this guy doing all right you know I so it's kind of inspiring I guess kind of like you don't have to be working so hard and killing out myself to be successful yeah so wait, with the wait, with the with the four in the morning, do you mean like, like I see you st staying up late and yeah, like I see you pretty much living, like I like you say you ain't really that concise type of person, and you still get shit done. I got you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, then, I thought you might have been going that way, but I also thought you might have been going like I see you like sleeping in and watching TV and <laughs> <laughs> you no. Know. So. Just kind of, just kind of like, just relax, you know, just be a bit more laid back about things and you don't mm. have to just be going so hard. Like one thing, like bro, a year ago this time, I was really going like hard, bro. Like I was beating myself up. I was trying to make a million dollars in one month. It's not Damn. getting no sleep. If it wasn't a cold shower, I didn't want to take it. It's freaking exercising like crazy. Just like just mentally, like I don't know, bro. I must he was hurt or something, bro. I know, I know. Definitely in August last year, I was going through some like weird emotional shit. Had to do a little mushroom trip right quick to see what's really going on. And I think I realized it's like oh, you just need to humble yourself up, and that's what I did. But anyway. Would you like to, uh, I'd say let's probably do one or two little last words and for sure wrap it. Savanita got to go to bed, man. 100%. I, uh, I'll just comment on really quickly on, on, on what you said. Yeah. Obviously, it's important to, you know, like work very hard, discipline yourself, go hard in the gym, all that stuff. Mm. But we have to realize that we're also not robots. We're, we're human beings. Disappointed. Not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> you may be, but the rest of us. <laughs> Chef bot. <laughs> um, yeah we're human beings man and my mom used to say that we're we're human beings not human doings telling you bro gotta be so rest is important um, another thing that I, I've learned too is rest like real rest is different than just scrolling through Instagram or 
Netflix. You're still stimulating yeah. yourself. And like, that's your not brain, real. Your brain ARS. Exactly. Where's it going with this? I think that, because <laughs> I've been in states like that too. Even I'm kind of in one of those now where I'm like, if I'm not doing something, like I'm not. Yeah, you don't feel it. happy, you know? Yeah. And I think at that point, it's more, you're looking for something more than money or wow. pre- prestige or a nice body. It's like you're looking for acceptance mm. and love. Damn. And Powerful. again, it's a balance too, right? Like obviously as humans, we're not happy with ourselves and we're not productive or contributing something. And I think that that's an important in, uh, you know, in balance, but we've naturally evolved not to just be 24-7 going all the time. We've always rested. Anyway, have you, do you have anything yeah. Anything else you'd like to I add? Have, I don't have nothing to add to that, but I want to ask you a question. Sure. If you were your future self, what would you tell yourself right now? Bro, I literally... Ask myself that today, man. I literally wrote out today. Crazy. I literally wrote out today on two pieces of like two sticky notes. I wrote past carry or KM and future KM. Mm. And the difference between the two. That's that Bruno training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally, literally from, I got I was, I was going through the uh, the modules again. We today. didn't even get to talk about sales for next episode. Yeah, next episode. Next we always episode. got we always got next stuff. So what did you write? I. There's the basic stuff, like, I wrote down, like, how much money I want to make, you know. <clears throat> Biggest thing. Well, it's kind of two different things. It's like, where do you want to be? But then, like, the, the that's an easier one, like, make more money, dress better. I want to be very confident and smooth. I, mm. I, I want to have, like, a James Bond kind of energy to me. Okay. Um, but still, you know, empathetic, compassionate, all that as well. But... The question, what would my future self say to me, is a is a is a deeper one. I think just wasting less time. And that doesn't mean to never rest. Like genuinely resting or meditating, yeah, or spending time with family. That's not wasting time. No, but scrolling through Instagram or whatever, jerking off, like you know, like that's that's a waste of time. <laughs> that's you know? a waste of everything. That's like. Whenever you're on your deathbed, you're not going to be happy. Or you're not going to wish that you were on social media more. You right? ain't going to be thinking about Alexis Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, well speak for yourself, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, don't waste time as much and just appreciate things. That's what I. That's what I really came down to. Is appreciate the process. I appreciate the that's process. That's what I came down to. Was and this kind of ties into another thing too. I want to make this concise, but whenever I started making beats. And singing and rapping, I used to be so frustrated that I wasn't where I wanted to be yet, where mm. I, I wasn't singing on key. I knew my rap voice wasn't present. It, it didn't sound impactful. And I was upset that I wasn't where I wanted to be yet and it wasn't at the quality I wanted to be yet. And now it is at the quality where I wanted to be at with the production, the rapping, and singing is still coming along, but it's, it's, it's coming along pretty well. <laughs> And I wish I would have went back and I did enjoy the process, but I wish I would have enjoyed it more and went, you know what? I'm not good yet and that's okay. And that's where I'm at with sales right now is I actually just had my first role play with Harvey a little while ago and my ego wanted me to go into my first sales role play and completely crush it, be yeah. the best ever, don't even have to look at the scripts. I'm just so <laughs> charismatic. And it wasn't that good because it's my first time. Yeah. So I'm trying to be humble enough to go, you know, back to the drawing board. Let me refine the skill, self-analyze mm. and enjoy the process of it. Enjoy becoming good at it. Oh, yeah. That was a long, long-winded answer to yeah. it. But do, would you also like to share your answer for that question? Man, if me as my future self looking at me right now, I would definitely tell myself to just remain patient, uh, stay humble, keep God first, and just continue doing what you do, man, because you're definitely on the right track. And then I'd pat myself on the back. There you go. Boom. Great answer. This is an awesome conversation, man. Thanks it for sitting awesome. again. It has been awesome. To many more. To many more. Peace out. People, we are here.